Hello there, I'm Vine and I have for you... I don't really know. This was supposed to be a funny roleplay anime girls build, but I stepped into the meta so hard that my legs fell in right to my kneecaps. So, this is probably the best virtual megacorp build. Before we start with the mechanics, let me tell you the Empire backstory, as the fact that this roleplay led to the meta build is hilariously serious. Basically, Weepst pushed for the creation of robotic waifus to make Earth a paradise for themselves. They succeeded. This led to the end of human civilization, as the normies died out of cringe or just left the planet, while the Weebs stopped reproducing because everyone was in a relationship with a robot. This left anime girls alone on Paradise Earth. As they were in essence a commerce bots, they banded into a mega corporation and achieved spaceflight to expand the anime industry across the galaxy. Thus, why the modded Miku portrait and media conglomerate civic. As for the rest, uh, you will see. Let us start with the mechanics proper. Origin life seeded as we need a planet size of 30 for Ecumenopolis later on. Alternatively, Ocean Paradise or Remnants Origins also work with this build, as Paradise is also a size 30 planet and Remnants let us rush Ecumenopolis instead. For the quicker place in multi, the latter is a better option. Authority, Megacorp for the branch offices, very important. From Ethics we need Fanatic Pacifist for minus 30 Empire size from Pops and Egalitarian for Utopian Abundance living standards. There is only one key Civic and that's free traders for plus 10% trade and branch office value. As for the second one, we can pick any other we like except Corporate Protectorate Civic I know that some of you will gladly exchange the fanatic pacifist ethics for this civic, but it's not worth it as it gives plus 100% empire size from planets and branch offices and plus 150% empire size from systems. As we will not be doing one system challenge with this build, this is a bad civic for it. For suspicious traits, we need machine for individualistic robots and trading algorithm for plus 25 trade value from jobs. And finally, the last thing from the Empire creation screen, the sole starting system for Mars and habitable planets in Alpha Centauri and Sirius systems. This will be very important later on. Now, let's jump into the game and look at the options there. Of course, starting with tradition trees. Those are mercantile for, well, everything here, diplomacy for federation, harmony for minus 15% empire size from pops from kinship tradition, and plus 25% planetary ascension effect finisher. Virtuality for more clerks, plus one resource output from virtual pops per clerk job, and to fill up all jobs on finisher effect. And the last tradition tree is domination for minus 10% empire size from Pop's finisher effect. Take these traditions preferably in that exact order. As for perks, we need universal transactions for free commercial packs and branch offices cost reduction. Voidborn for plus one jobs from habitat districts, synthetic age for virtuality tradition and the acrology project for ecumenopolis. Although we should ignore this last one perk if we are playing with the remnants origin. As for species rights, we need to set it to utopian abundance for all as soon as possible because it gives the highest possible trade value per pop. Then set the trade policy to the marketplace of ideas for unity gain. Now, let's talk about the game plan as it can be counterintuitive for some players. In the early game, we will be staying on the home planet and not colonizing anything. Still, remember to spread a little, take control of Alpha Centauri, Sirius and maybe some other systems with planets in them. Also, try to rush climate restoration tech to terraform Mars. 
then make friends with the galaxy for commercial pacts. They are completely free, so we can and should get them with all non-genocidal and non-gestalt empires. Use them to build branch offices, not for the credits, but for early science gain by building private research enterprises. Work to create a trade league federation. Trick with releasing a sector as independent empire does not work, as right now machines are always released as gestalt empires, which do not want a trade federation. We must use one of our trading partners for this. Try to get Scholarium vassals and get them into the federation for science gain and political leverage. Now we have covered all resource gain except mineral strategic resources and alloys. Since we went for the trade value as the main income, we can just buy minerals on the market, same with strategic resources. A forged capital designation will take care of alloys, especially when virtuality will kick in and all the clerks will improve the alloy production even further. Boom! We are winning already in the early game with this absolutely disgusting meta build. But we can't take it further. Build a habitat complex in Seoul and colonize Mars. Make a habitat a research station focusing on research and mineral gain, as the Seoul system should provide enough resources for both. Mars will be a mining wall. Don't worry about the small number of mining districts, since we are robots, mineral purification hubs will provide us with plus 4 of those. Upgrade the capital to Ecumenopolis, use clerks on all colonies for the resource production bonuses and trade value. Also, remember to put a ring on both planets and ascend all colonies to maximize resource output and number of districts. Now we are winning even harder as alloy income is in the thousands and we don't need to buy all minerals and strategic resources on the market, while the empire size is still relatively small. But we can't take this further. You see, the trade value is not a resource and production bonuses or penalties do not influence it. So. If we decide to lower the bonus from virtuality to zero by getting 4 more colonies, we will only gain credits, consumer goods and unity. Sure, the other resources will lose the plus 100% bonus we have right now, but in comparison, their income will still increase by around 50% due to bigger base production. Remember Alpha Centauri, Sirius and other systems with habitable planets in them? Choose the biggest one for the next Forge Ecumenopolis and build more habitats or colonize more planets for science and mineral gain, basically copying the builds from the Soul system. Now, at last, the Empire has developed to the bonuses limits and at this point we are more than winning. But we can take this further. Council Get non-visual pops on the fully developed planets by migration, slave trade, integrating vassals or declaring other empires a crisis in the galactic community and taking their planets. Since all jobs are taken by virtual pops and there is free housing everywhere, the new pops will just hang around unemployed, producing unity and research passively from utopian abundance living standards. This is also the true peak of the roleplay when anime girls created Whip Paradise again, this time for the whole galaxy to suffer. So we should not take this any further. Now, time for evaluation. In multiplayer, it's competitive. To be honest, this is a tournament worth a build, especially that the meta is now full of virtual trader empires with the sovereign guardianship civic, so you will have a good chance to get the trade league and a profitable branch offices. In single player, it's overwhelming. This build is so good that I had no problems with anything in my runs. I always had resources for literally everything, even including influence for the vassals and galactic community. AI has no chance against this one. 
as for the roleplay, it's virtual. I went with an anime girl's interpretation, but this is only one of many. You can roleplay it as a stock market bots, gaming bots, art generating bots, room bus. The catch is that it is always a post-human robots build, so despite many possibilities, you are narratively locked in as a bot. Anyway, what do you think about this build? Write your opinion in the comments and see you later!